Hello, welcome to Creative You Knitting and Crocheting Podcast. I'm Katherine Kirby. It's a podcast out of the Hanover, Pennsylvania area, which we, there's my cat. My cat screeches. She doesn't really meow. It's, it's uh, when pe people come and visit and, and she goes meow, and they're like, oh, this kitty doesn't like me, but I don't know. Come here. My grandson was over on Sunday and I watched him play with her nose and tickle it. And even though she laid her ears back, she let him do it. And um, she, when you pet her, I'm petting her now, she does, meow, meow, meow. she screams and then she does a little, murp, murp. but yeah, it's taking a while. We've had, um, Hartley, the big dog, almost a year now. We got him last November, and it's taken him a long time to learn to trust uh, my husband. And uh, the other Sunday, he actually went into the same room as my husband, Paul. And when Paul got a belt out to get dressed, the dog bolted and he was terrified. So we're learning more about him every day. Last week, I didn't do my podcast because I was grieving my little dog, Lily, that I had to put down. And um, if you've been with me for a while, last October, I had to put my little Ellie down. And it was almost exactly a year and it was sad. I cried all day. Our vet appointment wasn't until 6.30 in the evening. And it seemed like forever. The day just like dripped by like a drippy faucet. You'd look at the clock and it's barely moving. And I cried and cried and cried. And finally I said, okay, I'm good. I've cried, I'm strong. I can do this. I can take this dear little dog to the vet and be strong for her. So my husband and I were upstairs watching a movie called Flight Line with Jodie Foster to pass the time. It's a very compelling uh, suspense movie. And at 5.30, I tiptoed down just to check on Lily and I ran upstairs sobbing. My husband ran down here to see what was so terrible. And it wasn't, it wasn't terrible, but the big dog Hartley was laying on Lily's little bed with her. They had never laid together. They had never laid side by side. And there he was around her with half of his body off the little sleeping mat. And it really, really got to me <laughs> big time. So any of you that have had to put pets down, you know what it's like. And they say that the one thing that your dog looks for when they, they have that appointment is you. So you have to be strong. You have to be there for them. And the next day at the yarn shop, a customer said, oh, I couldn't help overhearing you. And she said, I had a Bichon for 18 years and I had to put him down 10 years ago. And I said, oh, it's so painful that some people never get another dog. And she said, it's been 10 years, 10 years. And she said, I'm getting ready. And I said, well, when we took in older dogs, we knew, you know, and she said, oh no, I could never get an, an old dog. But you know, Hartley, you have to put pictures of him in some time. Cindy was in the shop today and Cindy says, yeah, I was there the first day you brought him into the shop. She said, I thought to myself, well, that's really nice of you, but this dog's going to be dead in a month. And he's done great. He now runs a little. He gallops. He has, he loves his walks. We sometimes four walks a day. It's amazing. So let me show you. I finally, finally got this finished. And I was so proud of myself. I got the button on and it's kind of a sparkly button. And then when I got home, I realized I need two buttons. But this is a knitting pure and simple pattern. 
This is Cozy Soft, Delaray Cozy Soft Chunky. It's nice and soft, double moss stitch border. And I made this for my granddaughter, Gabby, but it took me so long to get it finished. I don't know if she's going to fit in it. Uh, knitting Cure and Simple, very easy two-sided patterns. They're great. They cost $7 and it was just so good to be done to work in all my ends um i guess i should probably block it sometimes when i'm working in ends because you can see on the other side what i'll do is when i'm weaving them in is kind of split the stitch so i'm not going under the whole stitch so that is the little girl's cardigan. Yeah, it does want to kind of, I guess I should block it, especially if I want it to fit her. So it's not my favorite thing to do, but it is rewarding. So this is one of my favorite crochet patterns, the um, chunky pom-pom beanie. I don't have a beanie on it yet, but it's, a version of a is it a herringbone stitch but you do it on i think an n needle this is done with debbie bliss paloma it's alpaca yarn it is so nice and soft i have made piles of these they're they're just so fun to make you don't want to stop so we've done a bunch of baby sweaters at the shop with the Sam Sadira and Katie pattern. And let me see here. I had this, whoa, big bin at the shop, not necessarily in the big bay window, but just at the beginning of it. And look at what the sun, look at what the sun did to this basket. It not only faded it, it rotted it. I mean, you can just pick it up pretty amazing that's what ages us the sun but even just holding it i'm pressing on it and it is just shredding uh, when i saw that the other day i thought i had a mouse in the shop so this is baby sophisticate it is a free pattern oh i think over it's 11 000 people have posted it on ravelry it's done with an Aran yarn, or I guess a heavy worsted. This, I'm pushing it. This is Kaleidoscope, um, super bulky. And so a little bit heavier than what they wanted. I did go up a needle size and it is a dense fabric, so it will be warm. You pick up stitches and <laughs> what confused me if you ever have a pattern and it just isn't making sense, just put it away for the day. Because when I picked up the stitches, it was telling me to knit up 22, do a short row, turn back. And then it said, you will have done this on both sides of the collar. Well, that didn't make any sense to me. I tore it all out. And the next day when I looked at it, it was saying, to knit until you have 22 stitches left and then do it. That made sense. I like that the dark brown just serendipitously ended up as the border. I almost decided to do just a little vest and um, just stop right there. And again, I did my border. I ran out of yarn. So I thought if I'm going to have to open up a new skein, I'm going to do the whole thing. And it's curling up. So I have to see if I want to block it. Uh, Kaleidoscope is a $10 acrylic yarn with kind of wave, color wave changes. It is very sim. Well, it is practically, it's the bulky version of the kaleidoscope that we did all the little kids jackets out of. This is the one I started to show you and then I got distracted. I haven't put in the buttons on it yet. This is the Sam version of Sam Sadir and Katie. I love this yarn. It's a cotton 
ribbon yarn. Here's the little hat. And isn't that so sweet? And it's 100% cotton. And so I just thought it was very, very cute. And this is in the colorway, doesn't give it a name. Uh, my friend Margaret Ann named this um, Opal, what did she call it? I called it Midnight Rose. I forget what Opal something, but it is a pretty yarn. So that is that. I, I apologize. My last podcast when I showed all the baby sweaters or two podcasts ago, and I made a mistake. I wanted to say that the pattern was $7. The Kaleidoscope yarn was $10 for a total of $17. And what I said was $7. So no wonder when people were calling, they were a little bit confused about the amount. This is Lily sweater, which I showed some of those with the baby sweaters. I think you have your option to do your hood in garter stitch or stockinette stitch. And this is with a yarn that's very similar to Kaleidoscope, but it's put out by Cascade and it's called Pinwheel and the bulky is called Big Wheel. There's a the little hat. Isn't that so cute? Holly Melhorn knitted this, the little ducky buttons, because she thought of this as the ocean. The little ducky buttons really make it. You just see these little yellow beaks. I think it's so cute. She did a great job. So this is a pattern by Cottage Creations, Carol A. Anderson. And it's a, a $7 booklet. I think they're $8 now. So good job, Holly. And then I started another uh, Sophisticate sweater. And I decided to do it with a yarn called Fantasia. And it, the skein looks like this. It's um, Aaron weight, bulky weight. And when you first start knitting with it, you don't see much in the way of color changes, but then you begin to see them. So this starts at the top and then you pinch off the armholes. So I wanted to stripe it and I wasn't sure. I mean, if I would have put a tan or a light gray, you'd be surprised how that would make the bright colors pop. But I decided to go with sunflower yellow. So we shall see if it's too overbearing, if it's too much, we shall see. So what's been going on at your house? We um, have been playing games and going for car rides, but it's starting to get dark early. Um, there isn't really much on television. A lot of shows are canceled or late and... Um, the book club at the, of the month at the shop was Sara Road by Julia Keller. And she apparently has a series out about this prosecutor. It's the only book in the book club that everybody had trouble getting through and didn't finish the book. So I was determined to get through it. It took me about a hundred pages to get used to her style because she has a way of constantly interrupting conversation and not letting it flow. So let's say the sheriff comes along, makes comments. She has to explain who he is, his personality and so forth. Once you got past all of that, it had a good story. It had multiple stories going at one time, but about three quarters of the way through, a lot of the characters started cursing a lot, and I didn't like that. I wouldn't read any more of her books, but, you know, I'd say, I guess it was worthwhile read. And I've read a lot of other books. As far as movies, I can't watch this on the iPad. It says not... 
available on this device, but I could watch it on the computer. It's called Still Mine, and it's a beautiful love story. It's from 2012, and James Cromwell, I first uh, met him when he was in Babe, the story about the pig. Genevieve Bujold, I guess, got awards for playing Anne Bolin, Anne of a Thousand Days. I hope you watch it. It's really a tender, wonderful movie. Let me know if you do. So, this is um, the heavier version of Cascade Pinwheel. This is Big Wheel. And it is very similar to Kaleidoscope Bulky, which I did the little um, Baby Sophisticate with. So this one is called Phoebe's Blanket. It has a lacy border. It's a pattern repeat of four rows. And I'm going to do two skeins, so I'm halfway through, have this little bit. And it is a free pattern blanket for Phoebe, done with a super bulky yarn on, or a bulky yarn double-stranded. So a lot of people say, well, I don't really get double-stranded, but it is a nice effect, and it seems to me different than using one strand of bulky yarn. Funny story, last week we offered to make dinner for a family that has a lot going on and really needed some support. My husband thought he would be home. It ended up, he was out of town. I put the pot roast in the crock pot in the morning. When I got home, the first thing I smelled was burning meat, but it wasn't. I think it was getting there. But it, oh, I just see a mistake there. Oh, shucks. Right there. Oh, no. How am I going to fix that? think that happens when you, well, I will drop that stitch down. It happens when you don't knit the stitch. So it'll look like one big stitch. And on the back, you can see where that stitch didn't get knitted. So I know on Sunday in Sunday school, I was knitting and one of the ladies said, oh, I crochet, I mean crochet, you can just rip it all out. Knitting, you can't. I said, well, that's true, but knitting, you can just drop one stitch down and fix it. But this is done with two strands of a bulky cotton and I picked Juniper Moon um, Cumulus, which is just a fluffy, uh, soft Egyptian Mako cotton and red really wasn't my choice of color but I thought why not with the holidays coming this comes from a book called Holiday Knits it's an older book I have looked at this book many many times it was a yarn shop a woman in Hollywood she talked about a lot of stars that would come in she would both knit, give lessons, sell things, and um, patterns were, I think, pretty simple because, I mean, there's just a plain garter stitch scarf, but why not, right? It can be pretty, and you need things for beginners, too. So what I picked out to do is called the straight neck pullover. So I cast on double strands, I cast on so many stitches, and then just knit for many inches, and then do a back piece, and then my sleeves. So I'm into it, let's see. And what else? Last Thursday, that's our trash day. My husband is so good, he always puts the trash out. So he left for the day. And I decided to clean the cat litter box. I put it all in a bag. You know, with today's clumping litter, you get all the clump. Put it in a smaller bag, tied it, 
took it out and put it in the bin. I was getting ready to go to the yarn shop. Not long after that, here pulls the garbage truck. And as they turn our trash bin, I see all of this stuff fall all over the road. And I'm thinking the cat litter. And it's a damp day, rainy. I'm thinking, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so I wait to the truck. I wait for the truck to pass. And I go out there, and it's not the cat litter. My husband had a big plastic bag tied to the side of the bin, and I think an animal got in it. It was chicken bones from the fried chicken we had a week before that, paper and stuff that was easy to clean up. So I was so glad it wasn't <laughs> what I thought. So this is my husband's sweater. The colors are really pretty. It's not a blue, it's a gray, like a marled gray. I've shown this many times. I don't want to get it um, too short, but I don't want it to be long, and I think I'm almost there. Um, get some nice buttons. It seems really big, but I think it's because there's not a body in it. I think once he's in it, it'll all be good, right? And... We've had the grandkids over, Nolan and Tobin. Nolan's eight. Tobin is now six. He's getting tall and thin. So he wants me to lay down on the couch and pretend like I'm a patient. And Patches, my cat, is sitting above me. And she's been having something with her paw. I don't know. It seems fine, but... So my grandson is sitting there being the doctor and he says to me um you're going to have to stay several weeks and he said that's your dog right well your dog can't visit he said now that cat and he picks up a plastic lid to one of my tupperware type containers and he acts like it's a chart and he says now, this cat was signed in under Catherine Kirby. That's you, right? Yes, it is, doctor. Well, we can help your cat, too. We have, we have things to help cats. <laughs> he was so cute. How do you not laugh? He is still beating me at darts. So, here is sock yarn shawls. And then Nolan, his brother... He, they go to church with us, and so he was really singing on Sunday. As I'm driving them home on Sunday, he said, Grandma, you have such a voice that you could make thousands of people cry. And he said, and you could make people fall asleep. Well, I'll often sing to the dog and rub his head, and he'll fall asleep. But when I told my husband... He's laughing. He goes, I'm taking that the bad way. Going to make all these people cry. And you're going to put them to sleep. Oh, goodness. So I had a class with a woman that wanted to do this. I didn't want to discourage her, but it's not an easy pattern. If you've never done a chart, I like charts because you can always see what happened in the row underneath. So if I'm knitting over yarn over and I'm not knitting over a yarn over, I know that I'm wrong. It's very easy to see where you've been and where you're going. And having said that, excuse me a minute, I still was having problems. I got the first chart A done. And I think I can see the diamonds coming out. So I was really struggling. I think I'm at the point where it's starting to flow. I picked, this is Air Lux. It's a very light number one yarn. Um, 
I picked this shimmery kind of fleshy gold color thinking it would be nice for Christmas and it would go with just about everything. So that is in this book and I am just at the very beginning. Oh my, okay, crocheting. I'm going to have to figure out what this pattern is it involves a single crochet, chain one, three double crochets. And this is Louisa Harding Lucy, which is a very nice sport weight, colorful yarn. And I like this pattern a lot. Um, I think this is a prime hook, P-R-Y-M. It's very comfortable, soft, has a little bit of give, but I think this will be really really pretty and hopefully that will be finished uh, by the next podcast i don't know what else will be finished hopefully my husband's sweater will soon be finished um last year i did a pumpkin and i never got around to felting it and i would like to do more pumpkins so this is Whoa, my yarn is getting tangled. Da Vinci, which is a discontinued, super bulky acrylic. And it's almost like just knitting a big neck cow. In fact, I thought this would be a nice neck cow. It's really soft. So now I am gathering all my stitches and then I'm going to gather all these stitches and I'm gonna stuff it with polyester. And then I am going to make my stem so stay tuned and what else i think uh, maybe one more thing excuse me for reaching over i'm also working on some special projects for people but i was I guess tantalized by this unusual pattern for a hat done by Short Rose. It's Yasolda Teague and it is called Urchin. And it is supposed to look like this. It has a lot, a lot of people made this hat. It's done with a super bulky. And I'm not sure that I have it right. Um, sometimes it's just as good to rip something back and just go to town restarting it. Almost looks like a bonnet there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Golly. And then one of my customers brought a whole bunch of these in. So I'm going to share them with a charity. It's a big neck cow. And I did find this pattern online. I forget the name, but I did find it. So maybe, maybe I'll be able to. And the way it's made, it lays neat. The way it's gathered, I like it. Yeah, I like it a lot because some cows are just straight out, but this, this is nice, really nice. Wow. So I think she was making these and selling these. My earrings are made out of gourds and they're very lightweight, even though they're big and clunky. They're, yeah, I might have to look into these because the gathering actually makes it lay nice. Wow, could also be a little girl skirt, couldn't it? Golly, so what else, what else? After having my hair short for years, I have been letting it grow out. My husband likes it that way. Um, I guess at 62, I never thought that I would let my hair grow out again. Um, but yeah, whatever. It's um, If you get to watch the movie Still Mine, you'll see that his elderly wife let her hair grow long you could picture what she looked like uh, young, and now she's just a 
older version of that. So it was pretty neat. So I guess it's goodbye until the next time. Thanks for watching. Keep watching. Let me know how you're doing. Um, and thank you for all the love you send and care and concern. And from my heart to yours, shine, baby, shine. <laughs>